Hello everyone, my name is Mohammad Hassan Iqbal. I am a graduate in economics, having over 12 years of work experience, and I am currently undergoing a certification in data science and advanced Tableau from Ivy Professional School. I have always been fascinated with the world of data and the intricacies which are involved in it, which prompted me to pursue this course and explore the wonderful world of data science. As a part of the course curriculum, I had to complete a research project where I had to find a problem with a real life data set available on open platforms on the internet and analyze it using SQL. This is a small effort from my end to help people understand how different business models and different business questions can be answered by correctly interpreting the data. For my research project, I used a database which is available on Kaggle, which is a wonderful portal having quite a few data sets which can be seen here. The data set which I used is seen here and it is named as the credit card customers data set. This data set has information of over 10,000 customers and I had to analyze this data set using SQL which is the abbreviation for structured query language. SQL is a language used in programming and designed for managing data held in a relational database management system or for stream processing in a relational data stream management system. SQL as a language is very popular across the globe and is used by a lot of organizations worldwide. The unique thing about SQL is that it is very easy to understand and learn as compared to other programming languages like Python and R, which makes SQL very user friendly when it comes to analyzing data and writing queries. Coming back to my research project, once I got the data set from Kaggle, I had to upload the data set in SQL. In order to do this, I had to create a database in SQL, which as you guys can see here, I have named it as research project. Once the database is created, I had to instruct SQL to choose the newly created database with the help of the use function. Now, there are two ways in which we can import data into SQL. One is by using the command prompt method and the other is by using the table data import wizard. The command prompt method is used when we have large data sets to be imported as opposed to the table data import wizard which is use of useful when it comes to smaller data sets. When we talk about lakhs and lakhs of rows of information that is when the command prompt method comes in very handy because it takes very less time in importing the data as compared to the table data import wizard. While using the command prompt method, we have to create the table along with the column names and the data types in the corresponding database. And the column names and the data types have to correspond to the columns, which is there in the raw data set file. Once that is done, then we need to set the MySQL bin path in the command prompt and run a few commands to import the data set. For the table data import wizard, we simply right click 
on the respective table in the concerned database browse and search for the csv file select it open it and import it by clicking on the import button one important thing to note is that irrespective of the method which we are using to upload the data set into our database we should always use a csv file the reason behind that is a csv file is very light in nature and it does not use much disk space and this is how we create a database and import data into the database in sql for my project i used the table data import wizard method because we are dealing with only 10,000 rows of customers. So let's move on to the more interesting stuff of how I analyzed the data, the raw data, I mean, and what were my findings and observations. I have prepared this presentation after analyzing the data in SQL and then using Google spreadsheet for data visualization. We begin with the contents of the analysis. First and foremost, we have the case study, which is nothing but understanding the data which we have on our hands. Then we would be defining the objectives, which would show the motive behind the analysis. Further, we will have a look at the data analysis part and the important factors which are affecting the business. This is where we interpret the data through different graphs and different models that I have prepared to understand the data better. At the end of it all, we would look at the findings and insights that would help the bank to improve their business and enable them to concentrate on specific attributes to minimize the attrition. So without much ado, let's go ahead and look at the case study. The data set for this case study has data of customers of a bank who are using their credit card services. And as you can see, as I had told you guys earlier, there are more than 10,000 rows of information along with different attributes which include the customer's age, what's their gender, how many dependents they have, what's their education, what's their marital status, their income, along with other relevant information like how long they've been with the bank, what's their utilization and you know their credit limit etc etc. So, moving on to the objectives. The main reason behind this analysis is to find out a pattern or a reason behind the customers leaving the credit card services. What is driving their decision is what we need to look at. And can we find it by looking at the different attributes? The answer is yes, we can. We need to find the pattern and let the bank know what they need to do in order to minimize the risk of attrition. That is what we are going to do after we go ahead and do the data analysis, which we are going to see in the upcoming slides. On analyzing the raw data, out of all the 21 attributes which are pre present there, I have summarized that these few attributes or factors are playing an important role behind the customers leaving the bank. In the slides coming up, we are going to look at each and every factor in details. What's their pattern? And then we are going to go ahead and inform the bank of what they need to do. So without much ado, Let's go ahead and look at the first factor, which is the customer's age. 
in order to get this information i have run a few queries in sql which i am going to run here just to show you guys how it looks in sql so this query basically gives us a count of those customers who have left the bank based on the age range and when we look at the visualization of data as you can see with the bar chart on the right hand side the number of customers who have left the bank is the highest for the customers who are between the age of 40 to 50 followed by the customers who are between the age range of 50 to 60 years followed by the customers who are between the age range of 30 to 40 years and if we look at the chart on the left hand side it gives us the average age of existing and attrited customers based on their gender and we can see that there is no difference or hardly any difference in the average age of the male and female customers and it hovers around the 46 years mark so that's the analysis which we can do based on the factor for customers age moving on to the next important factor which is gender for this particular fact attribute i have used this query to find out the number of males and females amongst the existing and attrited customers and as you can see from this chart here the number of females is higher amongst both the existing and the attrited customers moving on to the next important factor which is the education level for this particular attribute I have run this query where I have gone ahead and grouped the raw data based on their education level and found out what is the count of the customers based on their education level so what can we say from this particular bar chart it's very evident that amongst the attrited and the existing customers those customers who are doctorates and post graduates have a very high percentage of attrition to existing customers there is a uniformity amongst the different education levels for the rest of the education level however for doctorates and the postgraduate customers the percentage level is a bit higher moving on to the next factor which is marital status we can see there is hardly any difference in the percentage of attracted to existing customers based on the different levels of marital status going to the next factor which is income category we have observed that the number of existing customers is the highest for customers who have income for less than 40,000 however if we look at the percentage of attracted to existing existing customers then there is you know there is a fair range of about 17 to 20 percent across the different levels further we come down to the relationship of the customer with the bank how long has the customer been with the bank and for this particular factor I have run an SQL query based which can be seen here so as you can see here the, the number of customers is highest 
for the month on book range of 30 to 40 years this is for attrited customers which is again very prevalent from the bar chart which we can see here moving on we look at the tenure of inactive months what has been the activity level for the customers on their credit cards and we can see that the lesser the activity on the customer's credit card the higher is the chance of the customer leaving the credit card business or service and then we look at the average utilization for the entire population as you can see here the utilization is higher for existing customers as compared to the customers who have left the bank so based on all these different models and different graphs this is the finding which i can summarize and these factors are something which the bank should take note of and concentrate to make sure that they provide a better customer experience to the customers who fall within these factors in order to make sure that the attrition level is minimized so we can for sure say that these few factors are playing an important role and they are pivotal in forming a pattern amongst the attrited customers so as a business if we can concentrate on these factors and strategize a way to improve the customer experience for them then we can go ahead and minimize the risk of the customers attracting the business so that was all from my end guys i thank you everyone for watching this presentation